So with all the news going on in comics right now, a lot of people are asking the question, are comics about to die? Well, we've heard this for a while, and and it's it's not going to happen, at least not the way people think. It's not going to be like one day comics just are gone and you know, people just move on to other things. It's, it's the comics as an art form, like books, like many other things may change, may evolve. None of that's going to happen very rapidly, but change is going to happen. But, but, you know, for the sake of argument, let's just for the moment be creative here and say, all right, what if, uh, what if Marvel and DC went under? What if uh, Disney and AT&T said, all right, no more comics. We're going to print Batman t-shirts and socks and Spider-Man underwear, but no more comics. What does that look like? Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, this, this is either going to be kind of a very dry video or depressing one, depending on your point of view. But enough people have talked about, hey, you know, the big two are going to get out of comics. Like people like to say this. It's a, it's a fun kind of thing, I think, for, for people to um, say, you know, comics are a loss leader, and eventually the big company is just going to stop. People have been saying this for quite some time. Um, in fact, long before the social media wars was going on, um, I remember when Disney first announced the acquisition of Marvel. I remember where I was standing and, and who I was talking to. I remember one of the people I was talking to saying, well, this is it. There won't be Marvel Comics in, in five years. There will be no more Marvel Comics. And uh, people were like, oh, what makes you say that? You know, and they're like, why, why did, what does Disney want to do publishing comics? They're never going to publish it. They're going to build Spider-Man rides and all the rest. And they're going to get out of this losing comic business. Well, clearly that didn't happen. Comics continue to be published and things continue to go. But it's, it's an interesting thought. What would cause these two big companies to stop publishing comics? And if they did, what would happen? Well. A few things. Uh, first off, there is definitely a desire and a need for graphic novels for comics. And this is one of those cases where a lot of people who are comic fans who currently buy comics have a very definite opinion on this. Or people who are in the industry like to kind of cross their arms and say, well, the world is moving to graphic novels and that's just the way of the world. Well, the reality is most of the people who buy comics, the actual consumers, they don't really care. And you may be scratching your head a little bit. Wait, wait a minute. That can't be. No, uh, most people just want stories and how they get them, how they consume them, whether it's in a graphic novel, where it's in a single issue, is, is really kind of secondary. And, and it, there may be a lot of people, maybe a lot of you who listen to this go, well, the, the world of comics that I know, that I remember, that I engage with, is monthly. It's monthly comics. That's how it's done. That's what, that's what happens. That's what we do. And that's, that's how I consume them. I can't think of consuming comics in a different way. And that's fair. That may be you, and, and that's a lot of people probably fit into those categories. But the reality is, if it's a great Spider-Man story, if it's a great Batman story, if it's a, if it's a comic that you're really excited by, do at the end of the day, what is most important to you? Getting it in a 22-page floppy format? Getting it in a graphic novel format? Most people don't care. And so when a lot of people in the side of the comic business say, well, floppies are going the way of the dinosaur and it's all going to be graphic novels. Well, I mean, maybe because that's an easier way to distribute it. And that's what happens. But the fans aren't clamoring for this. No reader is going, oh, my God, I just wish I wish I would get a graphic novel instead of floppy. I hate floppies. I just wish this would change. Nobody is saying that. They just want their content. And ideally, they'd like their content for a price point that makes sense to them. That's what they're going for. The move to digital will accelerate and happen when more people are reading content there. Not just comics, but everything. One clear way to know when digital is going to be a foregone conclusion for comics is when digital books start happening, when people really start reading books on digital. Now, one thing that I think might accelerate this along a little bit is because of the pandemic, people at home and a lot of classes going to remote learning and Schools really leaning into the idea of you got to have a computer, you got to be able to connect in with these things, with laptops and other things. Um, that's a kind of a clue that you're you're pushing a generation who are already being raised on technology to move it a little faster. How long before just reading books? Forget comics, for a moment, but just reading books are natural on those devices. Um, we're talking a generation before that is kind of the go-to way to do it. And when that comes, comic books are going to be distributed that way too. 
But wait a minute, you might say, if Marvel and DC go away, comic books are going away. It's, it's going to be gone, a dinosaur in a generation. No, it won't. Because art and sequential storytelling and this idea of communicating and providing entertainment is, is relatively timeless. That's going to keep happening. Dogman, Raina Telmiger, others, they're going to continue to pump out this stuff. So if Marvel and DC suddenly decided tomorrow, no more comics, they scarlet witched comics out of existence, then other people would step up and fill the void. Now, what would that mean for comic shops? Yeah, they all go away. Well, not all of them, but they turn into that, that kind of comic shop I described in another video, the nostalgic comic shop, the back issue comic shop. It turns into a collector's market, but 90% of them vanish. The market can't sustain uh, the amount of comic shops we have today purely on a back issue collector's world. That that is it's it's uh, the business proves it. It's unsustainable at that level. Some that are already playing that space will probably continue. Some may expand. Some may be able to shift their business model. Most will go away. So the direct comic market. If Marvel and DC go, then the direct comic market goes. Unfortunately for the indies, this means they've got to find another distribution model and fast. And many will kind of stretch their minds to look at, well, I remember the newsstand. Maybe we can get that going again. The problem is the newsstand they remember is not the newsstand that exists today. So even if, and the odds of it happening are extremely unlikely, Marvel or DC manage to somehow get Safeway and Target and other places to carry their comics, the idea that they'd be sold and distributed and maintained and returnability wouldn't come back to just bite them hard in the ass all those things would mean it's a very different newsstand and putting all your hopes there would be challenging. So in a world of trying to get your content out to other people, that's probably going to necessitate a change to more of a graphic novel format because simply there's not a place to, to deliver monthly comics to where people are going to be trained to come back every month to pick up books. You're going to have a much more infrequent visiting audience. Or you go to online purchases. Or you strike up a deal as an Amazon merchant, you start shipping your books out that way. All these things are possible, but just logistics of it will probably push to bigger comics, less frequent. Comics as a business doesn't vanish. It does change. In the short term, it probably gets a lot more expensive con for, to consumers because, you know, without some of these factors, you know, you're going to see kind of what's going on with crowdfunding happening for the indie market. You're going to see comics push up into $10, $15, $25. You're also going to see a lot fewer of them. A lot of creators, a lot of people putting out indie books just can't sustain at that level. You will definitely see comics and kind of that, the, the um, I don't know, the audience, the culture that prefers indie Scott Pilgrim type stories. You'll definitely, that, that audience doesn't go away, but it kind of becomes put up or shut up time for that audience and the creators creating for them. That audience to date has not proven that they can sustain a line of comics. So you're going to see stuff like Scott Pilgrim hit. You're going to see occasional indie books, you know, strike a good marketing deal with somebody like Scholastic or something else that's going to help distribute these things. But the idea that an indie creator can come up and tell a little slice of life story and somebody will publish it, yeah, that's not going to happen. So if Marvel and DC left, it would be devastating for comics as we know it. But comics wouldn't go away. Comics would shift. And chances are, if somebody is really playing for big business, one or two of these indies would rise and would figure out a better distribution model that doesn't rely on the direct market and doesn't rely on some nostalgic belief that the newsstand can just reappear, and they'd be able to get books out. But the playing field gets very much leveled. What would be interesting in that world, if Marvel and DC vanish, is suddenly the people who are elbow to elbow uh, start getting, I mean... It, <laughs> and this is going to make people absolutely insane by saying this. If Marvel and DC disappeared, a guy like Ethan Van Skyver with Cyberfrog suddenly gets a hell of a lot more powerful in comics. And that's probably the reason why some people are pushing back on him so hard today. They do not want him to be powerful in comics. But that's that's unfortunately whether you like him or hate him. I mean, unfortunately, if you if you hate him, um, that's that's a reality you're staring in the you know, you're staring in the face because. Forget about all the rest. He's been able to make that frog book marketable. Forgetting about all the other politics and the people buying in. And yes, some people definitely buy into that comic because they're wanting to support a movement as opposed to the comic itself. Sure, there are people there. But he's, he's making that brand marketable. 
And so all the, you know, all the hate group and all that kind of stuff that goes on on social media, it isn't stopping that advance into marketability for his content. And so if, if you're determined to take him down, it's uh, you better think of a different approach. Because if Marvel and DC fold, and just for the record, once again, like I started with, I don't think either of those things are happening. I don't think Marvel and DC are stopping making comics. But if they were to, then a whole new set of power brokers emerges onto the scene. And that's going to be very interesting to see. Anyway, what do you think? Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, all that jazz. Thanks for listening.